Thanks, Maureen. If you have any questions, please hold them until the end. Our next speaker is Dave Exline. Dave is a senior vice president for Gateway Analytical in Gisbonia, Pennsylvania. Dave. Hi, thank you. Gibsonia is outside of Pittsburgh, by the way. Nobody knows where Gibsonia is. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you very much to uh, NIJ and FBI Symposium Steering Committee for uh, inviting us to be on this panel. Um, it really is an honor to be up here uh, with this group. And, um, and make sure you tell the steering committee and the other members, you know, thank you for this. Um, I was fortunate to be part of those committees uh, the last couple conferences, and there's a lot of hard work that this group puts into these. Um, so you should really tell them thank you. It's a, it's a, um, a lot different than it used to be. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna date myself too much. I'm not that old yet, but um, I was at the one back in the early 90s when they had trace symposiums, and I'm sorry to say these are much, much better and, and much more um, presented. Um, I'm just gonna open and just start for a second related to what Maureen ended with about this forensic science trace evidence analysis becoming extinct. Um, as a private sector, and I'll talk about a little bit of the history, but I've worked in both government laboratories and in the private sector uh, in the area of trace evidence analysis, and it is going extinct. Um, but it's up to us as trace evidence examiners to change that. Um, it really is up to the people that are in this room to educate people, to be active in publication and promote, because if police officers, evidence collection units do not understand what trace evidence is or the value of trace evidence, they're not gonna collect it, they're not gonna see the need for it. Unless we create that value for them, there is not gonna be any trace evidence. So it's not up to other people, it's not up to people creating reports, that's not gonna be the downfall of trace evidence. The only downfall of trace evidence is the people in the room not promoting it as much as we should be. It's a great science, um, we should make sure that we promote it in that way. Um, I've had the luxury over the last 20 years or so to work uh, for a couple different uh, government agencies as well as three companies in the private sector. Um, and over that evolution, you know, 15, 20 years ago, trace evidence was handled very loosely from a quality control perspective. Um, I'm not gonna say uh, examples, but there's, well, I will say the examples. You know, evidence would loosely be laid out on tables, stored under tables, and funding was hard. Um, a lot of times there were places where maybe lock up and oversight and the type of regulatory requirements that we have today uh, weren't in place. The significant changes occurred over the last 15 years to 20 years. Um, forensic science has cleaned up its act. Um, the regulatory oversight that we now experience is good, and the quality control that people implement in, the in most laboratories is very good. Um, so that evolution has come a long way, but it's not far enough. It still needs to go further. Um, and those are some of the things that I'm gonna talk about um, today. Um, in the private sector, as I worked for a while doing criminal uh, case work, as we get into the private sector, what we developed was moving criminal forensic work or trace evidence work into industrial environments, industrial forensic analysis. And with that, brings exposure to other regulatory bodies from a quality control perspective. Um, so as we move out of a criminal realm and into an industrial forensic realm, our oversight now becomes the FDA. And I'm gonna use that, that as a good example of where I see possibly the direction of trace evidence and our regulatory needs kind of heading in that direction. Um, and when we talk about those types of environments, we have an FDA as an overall regulatory body, but each customer, each ph pharmaceutical company, manufacturer, distributor, is responsible for quality control oversight of the companies that they utilize to do their laboratory testing or their laboratories internally. So it's not just the job of the FDA to do these oversights, but it's the responsibility of the laboratories to police themselves and to make sure that these are done. And not just to that standard, but I would also you know, submit that, that the attorneys have some, some role in this as well. And at some point down the road, I think that that's gonna be an important aspect um, with, uh, with their involvement in, in not auditing of laboratories because we've got that process in place, but some degree of implementation of, uh, 
of, of quality control oversight uh, from all perspectives. Um, the lessons that I've learned kind of over the last uh, 15 years of, of doing industrial type of forensic analysis is that the regulatory oversight is much more stringent uh, in industrial when you related to FDA and, and those types of things. Um, forensic science is moving in that direction and great strides are, are certainly being made. Um, as it relates to other areas, they've kind of moved a little bit forward in drug chemistry, um, toxicology, DNA testing. There's a lot of paper trail that's documented. In trace evidence, not so much. Um, that's kind of the direction that we're moving in so that we don't become an extinct science, that we keep up with other industries, we keep up with other people that implement these types of things. And the things I'm talking about, and I raise questions, this is a panel discussion, so purpose of this talk is to raise questions. Um, when we talk about documentation being critical to success, what's too much documentation? Too much is too much. There's a lot of documentation, but it's required, and there's reasons for it at the end of the day. Um, I didn't believe that. I was just a trace evidence guy, and I was very comfortable with doing what I was doing and writing it in my notes. And when I went to testify, I had my notes. Now I understand the value of documentation and scientific protocols and SOPs and quality control and instrument qualification and validation protocols if we're gonna try something new. These are things that are needed and need to become common language in the trace evidence community. When we talk about methods, um, not just methods when we're talking about doing fiber exams or glass exam and validating those methodologies that we do, but also the instrumentation and not just turning it on and checking to see if we a polystyrene spectrum looks right, but actually having qualification procedures for our instrumentation and making sure that these things meet up to the standard and that they're reproducible between laboratories. Um, audit trails are critical when it comes to case reviews and things like that. Um, but documentation is something, probably the biggest lesson that I've learned uh, venturing outside of the criminal realm into these other industries. Um, at first, not much of a believer in it, but now uh, a big believer in it. Um, so I have a few more things I wanted to talk about, but I think that I want to make sure that I get the, um, the main thing in, is that we trace evidence as it relates to forensic science is a critical aspect of forensic science. Um, do I think it will go extinct? I do not. I don't think people here will let it go extinct, and there's too much need for it out there. But what we have to do is we've got to do a better job of promoting it and making sure that when we are asked questions about it, that we can defend our data as solid as any other industry can in any other regulatory environment. 